After a car wreck that left him an orphan, a young boy becomes best friends with a dragon and must team up with others to keep it safe. Welcome back to Recap Spot. Today we'll be watching the 2016 family adventure film, Pete's Dragon. The film starts with a young boy named Pete as he reads in the back of a car during a ride with his parents. The book he's reading is about a lost dog named Elliot, but his reading gets interrupted when a deer runs in front of the car and causes a crash. You don't know what an adventure is? Elliot's parents are both killed, but he manages to grab some of his things and escape into the woods. While out in the woods, Pete is surrounded by a pack of wolves, but is saved when the wolves are scared by something and run away. A large green dragon then reveals itself. Are you gonna eat me? But instead of being mean and eating Pete, the dragon takes care of him. The film flashes forward six years, and an old man named Meacham is telling a story about how he once encountered a dragon, but no one else believes the story. The children in town are all enchanted by the old man's tale, but his daughter Grace assures them that if there really was a dragon living out in the woods, then she would have seen it by now, because she's a dedicated forest ranger. We then see Pete again, and it's revealed that he's been living with Elliot all these years. The two are playing hide and seek, and we see that Elliot has the ability to turn invisible. One day, the two are out in the woods when they come across Grace hiking through the woods, looking at owls. Pete watches Grace from afar and sees her head towards a tractor. Grace tosses the keys to annoy Gavin, a lumberjack and the owner of the tractor. I wonder where that lady came from. Pete watches as she leaves and finds that she accidentally dropped her compass. Elliot then comes by and smacks Gavin's tractor. The two head back to the cave where they live and spend the night reading together. The next morning, Pete gets up and is walking through the woods when he discovers that some construction workers are starting to clear the forest right next to his and Pete's cave. Gavin is working on the site and the other construction workers question if he got permission from his brother Jack, Grace's fiance, to cut this deep in the woods. Gavin didn't get permission, but he says it doesn't matter. Grace and Jack show up to the site and Grace is furious that the workers are cutting down more of the trees than they're supposed to. Jack, Gavin, and Grace all begin bickering, while Jack's daughter Natalie gets bored of listening to them. Hey, I have to get to school. She wanders out near the woods and spots Pete. He runs off, but she manages to follow him, even when he goes up a tree. She ends up losing her footing and falling out of the tree, prompting Pete to come down and help her. Having noticed she was missing, the adults come out into the woods looking for her and find both her and Pete. Where'd you come from? Pete tries to escape, but Gavin accidentally knocks him out, so Grace brings him to a hospital. Elliot wakes up and sees that Pete isn't there, so he howls for him. Gavin hears the howl and is intrigued by the noise. Elliot goes looking for Pete and ends up finding the construction site where he accidentally knocks over a tree. This gets the attention of all of the construction workers, and Gavin decides he wants to go hunting. Let's go hunting. Pete is in the hospital and hallucinating about his mother before waking up. Grace is talking with some doctors while Natalie goes into Pete's room, only to find that he's woken up and escape. Grace and the police try to find and chase Pete down, but he manages to evade them until he's stopped by a tall fence. Grace is able to catch Pete and tries to calm him down, but he just starts howling like an animal. Grace talks to the sheriff and convinces him to let her bring Pete to her home with Jack instead of taking him to the hospital again. You don't have to go back to the hospital. Once they get home, Pete tries to escape again, but Grace is able to stop him. Pete tells her about Elliot, and Grace tries to get more details about him, but they're interrupted by Jack. In the house, Pete is amazed and confused by all of the technology, and Natalie patiently explains everything to him. Meanwhile, Gavin and some of his team go into the woods to scout out whatever knocked down the tree. While being secretly followed by an invisible Elliot, the men stumble across Elliot and Pete's home. Gavin takes Pete's book and angers Elliot, causing him to come out of invisibility and scare the men. Gavin tries to shoot the dragon, but Elliot easily destroys his rifle. Realizing that there's no way to win, the men all drive off with Elliot secretly following them so he can try and find Pete. In Jack's house, Pete finds that Natalie has the same storybook as him, and Grace asks him if Elliot is a dog. Natalie then asks if Elliot is imaginary, but Pete says no. Grace is then called away to talk to the sheriff, who says he found out that Pete's parents died by looking into old missing persons cases. Pete spends the night drawing Elliot and shows it to Grace, which really interests her because of the stories she heard from her father growing up. Pete tells Grace that he thinks Elliot would like her and wants to introduce her the next day. But I think he'd like you. Gavin shows up at the house and starts telling Jack about seeing a dragon in the forest, but Jack doesn't believe him. Gavin leaves, and Elliot secretly lands in Jack's backyard to look for Pete. He spots the family all sitting on the couch reading together, 
and thinks that Pete doesn't want to be with him anymore, so he heads back into the woods by himself. Grace goes to her father's house and shows him the drawing of Elliot, because it looks just like a drawing he did of the dragon he saw years ago. Maybe if you could just be open to looking? Even though she still doesn't fully believe that the dragon could be real, she's starting to open herself to the possibility. The next day, Grace, Meacham, Natalie, and Pete all drive out to the woods to meet Elliot. At the same time, Jack gets a call from the sheriff, who tells him that Grace was supposed to drop off Pete for child protective services, but she still hasn't shown up. Realizing that Grace must be driving out to the forest, he also heads there. Pete finds Elliot and introduces him to Meacham, Grace, and Natalie, but their meeting is interrupted by Gavin and his hunting crew showing up to shoot and tranquilize Elliot. Elliot tries to defend himself while the hunting party goes after him, and in the process, his home with Pete is destroyed. Elliot is eventually knocked unconscious, and Gavin captures him, saying that he gets to decide what happens with Elliot since he's the one who caught him. He's hauled back to town and stored on a truck in the lumber mill. Ain't you ever seen a dragon before? Jack calls the sheriff to try and get his help, while Gavin forbids anyone from going into the lumber mill to look at the dragon. Meacham confronts Gavin about having no clue what to do with it now that he's caught, and clearly thinks that Elliot should be set free. Grace goes to check on Elliot, and he begins howling when he sees her. Some of the men aim their guns at Elliot, but she tells them to leave him alone. Pete hears Elliot howling and decides he has to help him. With Natalie's help, the two sneak into the lumber mill via a secret passage and lock the doors from the outside after Jack and Gavin go outside with everyone to deal with the sheriff. Okay, come on, who's in there? Elliot can't fly away because he's dizzy, so Elliot has him go invisible. When Gavin brings the sheriff into the lumber mill to see Elliot, no one can see him because he's invisible, and they assume Gavin is lying about everything. Everyone else leaves the lumber mill, but Grace notices that Elliot and Natalie are hiding in the room. Noticing that Elliot is invisible, she runs out to secretly tell Jack. Meanwhile, the kids are about to steal a truck so they can run away with Elliot, when Meacham stops them and tells them to let him drive. They just want to help. He drives the truck straight through the wall of the mill, and Grace, Jack, Gavin, and the cops start to chase after him. Gavin starts to catch up with Meacham, but Meacham won't give up and continues to gun it down the road. Gavin pulls ahead of him and blocks the road off with his car. He then gets out into the road and holds his hand up for Meacham to stop, but he soon realizes Meacham isn't going to stop for him and he has to run out of the way to avoid being hit. I'm trying. Meacham slams through Gavin's truck and sends it flying off the side of a bridge. Unfortunately, the damage sustained in the crash is too much for Meacham's truck and it rolls to a stop just off of the bridge. In order to get everyone to stop chasing them, Elliot flies up on top of the bridge and begins breathing fire on it, stopping all of the trucks from being able to follow them. As the dragon breathes fire, the bridge begins to melt and starts to crack. Jack and Grace are the closest to the fire, and Gavin notices that their car is about to fall through the bridge. Natalie and Pete yell for Elliot to stop, because Grace and Jack only want to help. Elliot doesn't stop, and Pete begins climbing his way up the bridge to try and get Elliot's attention. Meanwhile, Gavin is holding on to the back of Jack and Grace's car to try and keep them from falling, but it doesn't matter and the car begins hurtling through the bridge. Elliot finally hears what the kids are saying to him and dives off of the bridge after them. Elliot, stop! Luckily, he's able to catch both Jack and Grace as they fall, and he safely carries them onto the road. Pete talks with Elliot, and both of them know that the townsfolk won't accept Elliot. Pete and Elliot hug before flying off together while Grace is heartbroken and calls out for them to come back. Pete and Elliot go back to their home, only to remember that it was completely destroyed. Elliot is sad because he wants Pete to be safe, but knows that as long as he stays with Elliot, then he won't be. Elliot wants Pete to go back and live with Jack, Grace, and Natalie, and he tells Pete this by pointing to a drawing of a happy family in Pete's favorite book. Even though it breaks his heart, Pete knows Elliot is right, and he agrees to the plan. Elliot flies Pete back to Jack and Grace's house, just as the family are getting back from the forest. The whole family is overjoyed to see Pete again, and Grace rushes to embrace him. Elliot flies off and goes far away from the town. The film cuts forward some time later, and we see that everything is back to normal, even though now everyone believes in dragons. Jack and Grace get married and adopt Pete as their son, and we see them all take a trip north so that he can still visit with Elliot. And we see that Elliot now also has other dragon friends. Click one of the videos on screen right now.